Hey everybody and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. Uh, this is another one of these my solo NECA RoboCop reviews. Uh, I'm just going to try and get through the whole line. Um, again, Blaze hasn't seen these films. He suggested I do these on my own since he doesn't really know a lot about RoboCop outside like the old cartoon and such. Uh, today's review is on the original release uh, RoboCop from NECA. This is the one that started it all. It is the um, basic mold that is kind of tweaked throughout the, the releases of RoboCop. This exact same mold is used again for Night Fighter RoboCop, and then it's heavily tweaked for Battle Damage RoboCop, and then added in the spring-loaded holster for the spring-loaded version, and then of course that spring-loaded version was then re-released as the 8-bit version. Uh, the packaging on this one is kind of unique to this release. It didn't really carry over into the other releases, where the Battle Damaged and the Spring Open Holster are very similar in packaging. This one's kind of standing all on its own. We've got the Robocop logo along the top, his prime directives listed behind him, which are, of course, serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. Ooh, I wonder what that fourth directive is. Down here it says, part man, part machine, all cop, the future of law enforcement. And then we've got a shot of the figure here holding the gun, age of 17 and up. Inside the package we've got Robo, his gun over here, and then the Robo spike hand. The back of the package features another shot of the RoboCop figure, as long as it doesn't fall down. Large shot of the RoboCop figure, RoboCop logo on the bottom. And this whole packaging back says, In the ruins of old Detroit, a crime-ridden ghetto of the not-too-distant future, a good cop, Alex J. Murphy, is killed in the line of duty. A team of doctors and scientists are able to piece him back together as an unstoppable crime-fighting force called RoboCop. Impervious to bullets and bombs and equipped with high-tech weaponry, RoboCop quickly makes a name for himself by cleaning up the streets of violence-ravaged Detroit. Despite his new metal exterior, RoboCop is tormented by fragments of memories of who he used to be. As RoboCop discovers his past and the identities of his killers, he is out to seek more than justice. He wants revenge. Neck logo along the bottom. Get one more time from the front. Uh, before we get him on out of there, we'll take a look at him. Here we go with the original release RoboCop out of the box. It comes with two different right hands. One of them has the Robo Spike, which is in the film he uses to interface with the computer, amongst other things. Uh, this hand just pops off right at the where the sort of uh, forearm meets into the elbow. It just pops right off, and then you pop the other hand on there. Um, it's going to be too difficult for me to do from behind the camera here without knocking everything over. So if you want to see pictures in with the Robo Spike hand, just head to the link in the info section and you'll see pictures of that hand on. The gun slips into his hand really easily and it's it's gripped well. Um, it's got a finger sculpted out like that so that way you can get the uh, it actually into the trigger guard. I really hate it on figures sometimes where their hands are sculpted like this or something to hold a gun and there's no finger inside the trigger guard. But with as large as Robocop's gun is they were able to do you know the, the trigger guard and get the finger in there just looks really, really good. The size of the gun is really nice too. It's much better, I think, than the McFarlane release was. The McFarlane release gun was pretty tiny, and this seems more in line with the size the Robocop's gun was in the film. Articulation wise, this is going to get kind of repetitive across the board since it's the basic mold across the um, all the different Robocop releases. So bear with me. I, I just want to do this each time that way. If you only watch this video, you know what you're in for. He's got a ball jointed head, and he's got arms that swivel up and swivel out. He's got a hinged elbow, uh, swivels at the top of the forearms. This one, of course, where he replaces the uh, hand. He's got a ball jointed torso, and he's got a waist swivel, which is kind of tight. And it's almost completely hidden due to that sculpt, which is really nice. And he's got a ball jointed hip, which both the hips and the shoulder joints, you see there's a little bit of spacing in there. And it may not be the most accurate look, but it really helps with the different poses you can pull off with him, having that little bit of gappage there in between those joints, so you can really get some cool poses out of him. He's got a standard hinged knee, and then he's got hinged ankles as well. And those ankles have these nice, which I'll try and get that a little closer, these nice pistons behind, and the piston moves in and out as you move the foot up and down. Uh, the paint job on him is, is definitely more reminiscent of the first Robocop film, rather than the really blue tinting that was more evident in like RoboCop 2 and the series and all that stuff. It's really a, a silver RoboCop, and that screams the first film to me at least. Um, I think that the McFarlane one 
to me it had a little bit of a blue tint to it, which was moving more towards the sequels. But this plain silver color really reminds me of the first film and the animated series, which I really, really like. This being the first release RoboCop, he does not have the spring out holster on his leg. Um, so you're missing that feature with this release. But the benefit is, is that this release can kind of go a little cheaper now because a lot of people upgraded to the uh, spring out holster version. But even then, even without it, if you can get this one for a good price, this is a great figure to have. He's just a really cool looking RoboCop. Um, you don't have to have the spring holster. If you have a choice and then the same price, of course, get the one with the extra feature. But that's not to disparage this one at all. If you've already got this RoboCop, you're, you're not really hurting. This is a really good RoboCop, and there's really no need to upgrade. It's just, it's a, you know, it's just missing one little feature. All the, the paintwork across the board on mine was really, really nice. Um, I didn't see any stray paint apps or uh, joints that were stuck or anything like that. The one minor gripe, and I've heard a lot of people say this with this figure, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the video, you may have to wait for the still pictures, um, is that, I'll try and zoom in here. Bear with me guys, I'm just going to raise this up and do a little zoom in. Do, 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 do. That's about as close as I'm going to get. Um, is that you can see a bit of his nose under the helmet. It's like the helmet didn't go down far enough. And so a little bit, a tiny bit of his nose is showing underneath there. And that's really kind of inaccurate to what RoboCop's like. It seems like it's across the board with the, well, I don't know about across the board. But a lot of people have this issue. Um, it's something I don't see very much complained about on the Spring Out Holster version. And my Spring Out Holster version does not have it at all. Um, let me see if I've got my, yeah, i got it right here. I don't know if this will show up in the, the video or not. There they both are. Um, I think you can kind of see a little bit of the nose in this video, but again, check out the still pictures if you want to get a, get a good view of it. Um, since I got him here anyway, let's zoom on back. Do, 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 do. I think that's good. So this is the spring holster, and that's the original release. As you can see, they're very similar, and with this holster put away, they pretty much are identical releases. The bodies are basically the same across the board except for those holsters and the fact that you can kind of cover up the nose. This one seems to have covered up the nose more across the board. Um, the paint is a little tiny bit different on the spring holster version on the flesh part than it is on the original release. It seems like there's a little more detail given to the lip. This one has a little bit more like straight across the, the face type look and this one's got sort of a variation between the lips and the cheeks. Um... I think that's a good view of both of those. I don't think you really need too much more info on that. Uh, let's put Robo next to some of the other NECA releases so you can get an idea of his size in case you haven't picked up a RoboCop yet. Um, here we go. Here's Rambo, which Sylvester Sloan's kind of short, so that works. He's a bit shorter than the RoboCop figure. And then we've got Dutch from Predator. So here's your big 80s three right here, RoboCop. Uh, a, a Schwarzenegger character and a uh, Stallone character all lined up together. They look awesome all in one grouping here. And this is like an 80s kid's dream come true right here to have all three together. Uh, but if you're not digging on the human character so much and you want to put Robo up against maybe a villainous alien, here he is next to one of NECA's Predator figures. Uh, wow, I have to kind of pull it back as that Predator is so tall. There we go. Uh, so those there, there's those two together. I'll give you a little more size differential between another NECA product. And since we did this before with the 8-bit RoboCop, let's line them all up just so we can see Robo next to his other counterparts. Now, the Night Fighter RoboCop uses the same exact mold as this original release RoboCop. Um, the only difference being that it's molded in glow-in-the-dark plastic. Uh, I painted the face on mine, which we'll talk about when we get to that release. Um, there's those two. And then we've got Battle Damaged, which I think we'll do that video next. Um, it has got a very much tweaked version of this sculpt. Um, I think the basic sculpt was the same, and then they added all the Battle Damage onto it. And then we've got the Spring Holster. We'll put him right here. And then we've got the 8-bit version. Let me pull this back a little bit. There we go. So there's all the different RoboCops, the different flavors. Obviously moving forward from that one and then tweaking it here and there as each release goes on. 
Come on, all these RoboCops out of here. I want to show you next to Ed 209 too. Just in case you did pick up this RoboCop back in the day and that's the only one you picked up and you want to have an Ed 209 to go with him, they do look great together. And there's really no reason to, to, go, out of, to go out of your way to upgrade to the spring holster version if you got this version. Like I said, in the info section you'll find a link to all the pictures of this guy, uh, comparisons with the other ones in pictures, action pictures, all those kind of things. Uh, and I guess that's about wraps it up for this one. Like I said, I think we're going to tackle the battle damage one next. So keep checking the channel for that update. And see you guys next time.